Welcome to the Kingdompreneur Life Podcast with your hosts, Doreen and Pat Martin. Well, hello, 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 everyone. We have one of my most favorite guests today. I, in fact, I could not sleep last night because I was so excited to do this interview with this woman. Um, not only because I think she's super talented, super gifted, but because she has helped me in my own journey with hormones. So we are going to talk all about hormones today with Candace Birch. I just love her. Let me just give her a proper introduction and edification because she deserves it. She has a master's degree. She is a hormone health educator. She does private consults, which is what I what I used her for and how I found her. Uh, she is the founding member of Women in Balance, a nonprofit that advocates for women and hormone health. Her website, I want to take this down, is yourhormonebalance.com. And she got into hormone health because, of course, like we all do in our own journey, we have our own issues and then we try to figure them out. Well, she had her own hormone issues. And on her website, it says, that she had meltdowns and hot flashes, and had she not found the proper way to balance her body, she might not be married today, which is, I can relate to that so much. <laughs> so welcome, Candice, welcome. I'm so Thank happy to you, have Doreen. you. Thank you, Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So Candice was a blessing in disguise for me. I, I heard a podcast that she did. She talked all about hormone health and I was like, wow, this woman is so on point with hormone health and she knows it and it's her niche. She knows insides and outs. She has testing that you can get on her website and she really helps you to dig in and understand what's going on. She shows you the results, what's going on with your body so that you can be your own best health advocate and find a solution to your hormone imbalance. Is that pretty much right? That sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, so tell us how you got started in health and why you specialize in hormones. Well, going back a bit, I, I got a, uh, I was a, um, a ski bum for a while, living in Aspen, Colorado, after I got my degree at the University of Colorado, went to, you know, skiing every day, and I developed really bad knees. So I was put on all these anti-inflammatory drugs, which gave me asthma and allergies and turned me into, you know, sort of a, a nasty woman. And uh, also, I was, I was just you know, having to go to the doctor all the time and have all this uh, cortisone put in, you know. In your knees? Yeah. So I just started realizing this is not, I can't do this forever. I was 23 years old. So I started reading about biological medicine at the time. There was a book about that by Pavo Arola. And I read this book and I thought, biological medicine, this makes so much sense. He was talking about, you know, mimicking mother nature, doing the things that are natural instead of all these synthetic things. And that was at age 23, I had a sea change in my way of approaching health. So I went on a 17-day juice fast, healthy juices, wheatgrass, all kinds of things, and found that uh, my knees were so much better. I could ski without pain, and they weren't swelling up. I mean, they were swelling up all the time. So after I did that fast and started changing my diet, mainly taking sugar out of it and, and bringing in healthy whole foods, and this is back in the 70s, uh, I decided to go get a master's in health education. So I became a health educator, worked in England for many years uh, in, in the publishing industry, uh, writing about health and medical issues, and then came back to the States when I was about 48 years old. I had a six-year-old and a nine-year-old. So I started late. And at about the time I was, yeah, just right around into perimenopause when you start shifting, when the ovaries start sort of packing up and <laughs> hormones start going on this erratic mood swing thing up and down and you're on the roller coaster. I kind of knew that's what was happening to me, but <clears throat> I was really having a hot flash every 20 minutes and a mood swing in between. And I remember looking at my little one, Ryan, one day and I was sort of, plus I was drinking a ton of coffee, of course, and um, started looking at her and realizing that I was screaming, not talking, and that she had fear in her eyes when she was <laughs> looking at her mommy. And I just thought, okay, that's it. My child is afraid of me. <laughs> I have to change something now. So I started, the first book I read was What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Menopause. 
Um, and that was by Dr. John Lee, who is one of the gurus in this whole movement of, you know, away from synthetic hormones and on to bioidenticals. And he even coined the term estrogen dominance, which we can talk about. And he brought in, he put the, the idea of hormone balance imbalance on the map. Mm. You know, that you, there's such a thing as a hormone imbalance, and that can happen at any age. It's not just about menopause. And that happens for a variety of reasons. So I started reading his stuff, and I remember crying, thinking, he's, he's speaking to me. It's just, it's <laughs> it validates. It validates. Yeah. yeah. And I ended up emailing him and saying, oh, Dr. Lee, can I please study with you? I'm a health educator, and I'm in menopause, and I'm scaring my children, and I just need to learn more, and can I sit at your knee and learn? And he said, well, I'm, I'm not doing any trainings, but uh, there's a really good uh, there's a there's a guy in Portland, Oregon, where you live, Dr. David Zaba, who is a guru also in biochemistry and hormone testing. So I went and met with him and ended up working at his hormone testing lab for like 15 years as a hormone as his hormone health educator. So that's kind of the lo it's a long story long, <laughs> but that's and so and I'm doing I'm not there anymore. I'm on my own doing private consults and online because I found that. We, over the years, were moving from into the provider space where providers were doing a lot of this testing, which is wonderful, but the consumers out there, the women who are sort of out in the cold, not knowing what to do, aren't getting enough conversation. So I decided, let's talk to women, and I'm going to just do that. I'm going to focus on women like you and me and like our daughters and et cetera. So that's awesome. where I'm at right now. <clears throat> love that and that was so how he validated like how you were feeling that's how you were for me it's like you validated like my craziness was like oh that's just part of the journey we got to get you balanced you know yeah <laughs> so, absolutely it's not yeah. permanent exactly it doesn't have to be permanent <clears throat> so you talked about perimenopause so what happens to women around <laughs> age 40 that causes us not to be able to burn fat like we used to I notice in my own body it's kind of like shifted when I hit 40 and it just, you know, wasn't functioning the way that it needed to function or the way it was functioning when I was younger. Well, I mean, there's, you know, there's the common thing where, you know, your metabolism goes down and it slows down as we get older and certain hormones shift and all that. But the, the big thing that happens as you get into your 40s and depending on how much stress there is in life, in your life, and I, I don't necessarily mean... <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, bad stress, but you know, there's good stress, there's bad stress. If, if stress takes center stage, we start to see younger and younger women moving into this place where they're gaining weight that they never had. And they're shocked. It's like, why I'm eating the same way. It doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm exercising as I used to. And, and suddenly I just cannot shift this, especially belly fat. That seems mm. to be the major complaint or fat migrating into the hips and the thighs and the bottom and, and just not being able to get rid of it like you used to. And that's generally because our, our um, ovulation starts to become erratic and that's back to the stress thing. But this would happen anyway around the age of 45. The ovaries start to wane and that waning can take eight to 10 years. That's the peri nearing menopause phase. And we're seeing younger women get into that because we're living in a world of abundant stress and hormones start to shift and decline, especially if there are high stress hormones on board, then things start to go south. And the two hormones that really get out of whack are progesterone and estrogen. If you do not ovulate, which many people don't um, every cycle, you can have a period but not ovulate. If you don't ovulate, you do not make the proper amount of progesterone second half of the cycle. You know, we first half of the cycle is all about estrogen. It's growing that egg in the ovary. It's growing that blood rich lining, the uterine in the endometrium just in preparation for pregnancy. Then we ovulate, the egg pops through that follicle goes on down the fallopian tube to find that friendly sperm. And in the meantime, uh, that, that follicle that was ruptured, that the egg came out of, becomes its own magical little, it magically transforms into what we call the corpus luteum, which does nothing but produce progesterone, the whole second half of the cycle. So progesterone is the hormone that says to estrogen, okay, you grew the egg, you've made the blood-rich lining enough already, we can stop now and start 
feathering the nest, no more growth, please. No more growth going on. We need to feather the nest, differentiate this area so that an embryo can implant. If there isn't a pregnancy, then progesterone sends the signal, okay, no pregnancy, let's shed this lining, and that's when we have our period. So if that ovulation doesn't occur and we don't make that progesterone to balance estrogen, estrogen just keeps on creating a growth situation, a stimulation of, you know, the uterine lining keeps growing. So these are the women that have heavy periods, cramps, water retention. Um, they may have, you know, you've heard of obviously fibroids, endometriosis, where the thickening is so unchecked that it actually starts to migrate into the pelvic regions. And every time you have a cycle, those areas fill up with blood too. Very painful. This is all about growth. Estrogen uncontrolled by or unbalanced by progesterone. So if women in their 40s start to, as ovulation wanes and we're not making much progesterone, estrogen starts to take the upper hand and then there's this phenomenon called estrogen dominance. So when you tested, I can't remember exactly what your results were, but <clears throat> a lot of women are very low in progesterone and even if their estrogen isn't extremely high, even if their estrogen is within range, even low, if progesterone is that much lower, relatively speaking, then we are still estrogen dominant. And when that happens, there's a whole litany of things. First of all, we get estrogen dependent weight gain. We get, um, that's when fat starts to, the, the female pattern of uh, fat pattern distribution is controlled by estrogen. So that's when you start to see that fat gain in the hips and the thighs and the breasts may swell. You have tender breasts, fibrocystic breasts. So that's all about estrogen dominance and estrogen dominance also runs interference on thyroid. So mm -hmm. that's another subject. How does estrogen dominance interfere with thyroid action when the thyroid is actually healthy? That's something called functional hypothyroidism, where people are gaining weight. Women in, in their 40s are saying, but I never had a weight problem. It must be my thyroid. Let's get me on thyroid. They go to test their thyroid. There's nothing wrong with their thyroid. The tests come back fine. It's because estrogen dominance in its hidden little silent way is sabotaging the thyroid from actually converting to active T3, which is the active thyroid hormone. So I'm rambling now, but you, there's, you see there's all these knock-on effects. Yes. You ask a simple question, and it's not a simple answer. Right. Uh, and I think that was my thing. I think my progesterone was low. Low. My estrogen was <clears throat> high, and my thyroid came back okay. But, right. Yeah. But, prob but what was going on, and I remember you were feeling like you weren't in the zone of mental clarity and thought. You weren't being able to lose weight as easily as you had before. Um, and, and that is all overlapping symptoms with the estrogen dominance running interference and then also affecting your thyroid, which then you get these overlapping symptoms of foggy brain yeah. and can't, can't process information like you used to you know, the light bulb is not turned on and you just feel like you're sluggish in mind and body. And indeed you are, you know, you, you, you're, every, the, everything is kind of on slow burn. Mm -hmm. so yeah. it, it, it's harder to think straight and it's harder to lose weight. Finish and, a, I was having trouble finishing a sentence. Like the mind would just be like, I would be oh, having a menopause moment because like, I forget what I was going to say in the middle of Oh, that was really common. I remember that as being very common. And, you know, people hanging on your every word and you can't come up with it. How about walking into a room and not knowing why you came in here? Oh, why? What is, what is it? I mean, that sounds pretty common, but when it gets to, that happens to all of us momentarily, but when it starts to become uh, the way of things, you know, like you can never, and that's when I say so many people become their symptoms. They start to think, oh my God, I'm just a, you know, I just can't ever get my thoughts clear. What I'm just becoming, you know, this tired all the time, crabby, flabby witch on wheels. <laughs> I know. I remember doing some podcasts where I was being interviewed and then answering the question and then go, did I answer your question? Like, yeah, I, like, I don't know if I said something, but did it go with what you asked me? Because <laughs> the brain was... And I was sorry. And I would just apologize. Sorry, menopause brain, you know. What yeah. And everyone gets it too. Yeah. They get it. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm sorry. So, so to um, that end, we know we're not alone. <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about birth control pills um, because I, when I was listening to your podcast, I thought it was really, really important how you touched on because <clears throat> you touch on the menopause and older and aging women and what we go through, but you also touched on like birth control pills <clears throat> and what that does and the younger generation and how that's impacting them. What did I say? <laughs> 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 did I did I answer that question? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, actually, it's interesting since um, it's true. I was often mostly working with women in menopause and perimenopause, and it wasn't until my my daughters, who are both millennials, said to me, "Mom, you should be on a podcast and speak to our age group because we, you know hormones is a hot topic, and we're all talking about it." and so when I went on these, I've been on these few podcasts, which are mainly listened to by millennials, and I've done a lot of consults with girls, gals in their 20s all the way through their 30s, and I am stunned at the number of women, <clears throat> young women, who have been put on birth control for, for reasons other than needing contraception. So mm -hmm. they're put on birth control because they have heavy, painful periods or because they have horrible PMS or because they have acne and breakouts. And indeed, birth control can help with that momentarily or for a time. And you know when your skin is bad and you're 20 years old and you're, the world is your oyster, you know, you, you're, it can be a trauma to have skin breakouts, etc. But I'm really becoming... You know, when I look at the test results of these gals, and some of them are testing while on birth control, so they're getting a baseline that is definitely under the influence of the contraceptive. So you see extremely low levels of estrogen, extremely low levels of progesterone and testosterone. And you would, because, you know, the, the aim of the birth control is to disrupt ovulation, and it's the ovaries that produce those hormones. So if they're shut down and inhibited by this very powerful, potent synthetic hormone, um, they can't make any hormone. And indeed, the body is supposed to be tricked into thinking it's already pregnant and all of that. But long term, and you talk to these gals, and they may have been on birth control since they were 12 or 14, and now they're 31. Or I've even talked to women that are 47 and, and 50 who are still on birth control. Wow. E even though they're well past fertility, but they're, they're afraid their skin's going to break out. And the fact is, these hormones are synthetic. They're very powerful. And what happens with younger women that are on them for years is that suddenly, or, you know, they meet the guy of their dreams or they want to have a child. Now they, can't, they cannot reestablish normal cycles. It can take a year or two to reestablish a normal cycle, to even ovulate. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, in the meantime, you've got all these side effects of these synthetic hormones, in fact, creating a hormonal imbalance that you're living with. And a lot of these young women have horrible anxiety, really are living with terrible anxiety, which is one of the, the biggest effects of birth control. They are, and, and the strong progestins, and I say that progestin is not progesterone that normal, the naturally occurring hormone. It's a synthetic that has been shown in the Women's Health Initiative to be even more dangerous than synthetic estrogen. Wow. Prem pre Premarin derived from horse urine is not as bad, even though it's bad, um, as synthetic progestin. So we've got a lot of anxiety. Uh, young women who are madly in love with their husbands or boyfriends or partner and just could live without uh, sex forever they don't it's kind of meh you know no mm -hmm. libido um mood swings terrible pms and weight gain lots of weight gain in the stomach and belly fat so in fact i'm looking at these gals and i'm thinking my god you've got symptoms like women in menopause mm -hmm. and i'm beginning to really even though i was on the front lines i was one of the first people to take birth control back in the 60s so won't reveal my that tells you about my age but think of mother hen here <laughs> um, but and i remember crying all the time that's all i did <laughs> just cry when i was on birth control and i it, i don't even with lower doses etc it hasn't changed um, people are still suffering and you know some people say well i'm i'm on a low dose well a low dose can mean that you know there's a low estrogen in there but a high progestin and then you stop making vaginal secretions and you're dealing with vaginal dryness and pain upon intercourse and you're 28 and you just got married mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. a drag 
Yeah. Um, not to mention the long-term risks, which are serious. There are serious long-term term risks of ir- infertility and cancers due to these synthetic hormones. So I'm becoming an advocate for, hey, can you give your body a break, take a break from the birth control, especially if you've been on it for ages, um, and go on a non-hormonal birth control. Sadly, there aren't enough of these versions, Mm -hmm. but non-hormonal like uh, the copper paragard IUD. Um, Also, I have been suggesting that women use a little bit of natural progesterone while they're on contraception, because not every woman's willing to come off. so using a little natural progesterone won't interfere with the contraceptive effect that will relieve some symptoms. And there's another, there's an herb also called chaseberry, uh, vitex is the Latin word for the plant, that can also help to relieve some of these symptoms. So long story short, for women who are afraid to come off contraception, there are some things you can do, as I just mentioned, to relieve the symptoms and maybe kind of ameliorate some of the worst effects. Ideally, it's better to come off that birth control, give your body a break, and look for a non-hormonal alternative. Yes. Many women, I'm surprised at how many women I've talked to, because I'm saying, look at these, all of these symptoms you've got. Look at your levels and look at your symptoms. This is directly because of this synthetic uh, birth control you're on. So is it time to take a break? And most of them are ready. They know it. They don't Mm -hmm. feel good about taking something that's so powerful and unnatural. And um, many of them are doing things like, you know, using the rhythm method, using condoms. I've heard that a lot. There's something called fertile focus, where you can, you can um, test your uh, mucus. And if there's a fern shape in this little, there's a little device, you can see the fern shape, and you'll know that this, when, when, when you're ovulating, that wow. fertile focus, by the way, can be purchased on uh, Dr. John Lee's site. <clears throat> johnlee.com. So there, I think, you know, I want to sort of start standing up and saying, I get it. We need to have birth control. We need to have family planning, but think, think about your body. If you're mm-hmm. feeling like total crap while you're on the birth control and you've lost your libido and all these other things are extreme, uh, consider making a big change. So mm-hmm. that's, that's my stance. Uh, I remember when I was in my twenties and going on birth control, I had mood swings like crazy yeah. being on birth control and I had to just say, I got to get off of it. I mean, in fact, mm-hmm. the day of my wedding, I called up my fiance and said, I'm not getting married. I'm not getting married <laughs> to you. I am not doing this. You know, he was like, put your dad on the phone now. So I was my, we were in a hotel room and I was like, dad, he wants to talk to you, but I'm not going through with this wedding. And so he just said to my father, get her to the church. She'll be fine. It's these hormones that she's taking. Yes. Like, get her yeah. off these hormones. So yeah, I they hear that me- all the time. I love my boyfriend, but man, I don't want him anywhere near me <laughs> during a certain part, part of the, and you know, a lot of these gals are worried they're going to lose their boyfriend or like I was saying, you know, I, I think going on natural hormones and finding out I had an imbalance and what to do about it saved my marriage and probably uh, helped to de-traumatize my children and realize mommy really does love you best in all the world. (laughs) It was just her hormones. Now they get it. Um, um, Okay. Well, awesome. So we cover that. So let's talk a little bit about bioidentical hormones because you talk like there's a synthetic hormone and then these bioidentical hormones are like so huge everybody's talking about i have a girlfriend that she's a nurse practitioner and she gives pellets you know and she's a big pellet person you know and always telling me you need to get pellets i'm like no i'm not getting pellets i'm more holistic you stay to your pellets but anyway let's talk a little bit about bioidenticals and you know if they are good versus synthetic hormones if those are good like just give us a balance like help us to understand the two that are offered to us and when we know what one we should take or how we should take it. Okay. Well, first of all, women in Europe have been using bioidenticals for 30 years and the best studies on the use of bioidentical hormone versions have been around and they're out of Europe generally. So we in America are kind of controlled by big pharma who don't want to patent a natural hormone because you can't patent a natural hormone. No patent, no profit. So bioidenticals are plant-derived hormone versions. And yes, they're made in a a laboratory, um, but they are made to be identical in structure and function to the hormones our own bodies make. 
and the other would they're derived from? Oops, just a second. We've got a stall in the in your internet connection. So hold on just a second. Okay, so go ahead and tell us about the difference between the bioidentical and the regular synthetic hormones and you know, help us to be educated and making an informed a decision as to what we should do for our own bodies. Okay, um, so I mentioned Dr. Lee before. He, um, he was a uh, an OBGYN practicing in Marin County, California and had actually Marin County has had one of the highest breast cancer rates in the country. And he was treating his women with synthetic hormones, Premarin, which is made Premarin, pregnant mare's urine derived from pregnant mares. And um, wait a second, is that still available today? Yes. Premarin? Kind and of remember I, my mom being on that, like yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah. And 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 even worse is the combination Prem Pro, which is Premarin synthetic mare's urine and synthetic progestin in a combination. Uh, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, which, you know, women have been on since the 50s when, what's his name, Dr. Somebody Wilson went around lecturing for one of the big pharmaceutical companies saying women who are in menopause just become dried up old crones that nobody wants to live with. And unless they take their estrogen, that is, that makes them kind and helpful and, and um, pleasant to live with again. So there was this whole campaign, all the medical magazines were touting estrogen, and he, he went, wrote a book called Forever Feminine and went on a speaking tour, and Prempro synthetic hormones became the numero uno best-selling drug for women, and it has continued like that until about 2003. Uh, and by the way, as that continued, so in tandem rose the rates of breast cancer, because we're talking synthetic estrogen growth hormone, grow, grow, grow. Every 97% of breast cancers are related to these synthetic hormones, or too much estrogen and not enough progesterone, which is entirely protective. Um, anyway, so Dr. Lee went to England. He studied with a woman named Katerina Dalton, who was studying women in her practice who had PMS. She found, you know, PMS, there are 150 different symptoms, and she was testing these women, and she was finding that most of them were really high in estrogen and not ovulating. They were low in progesterone. They had high stress hormones. They could be high in testosterone. So out of balance, just out of whack. Dr. Lee came back to the States and started changing his whole practice and found that he never had a single case of breast cancer after he changed the way he treated women. He started using lifestyle changes, nutrition, exercise, stress management, and natural bioidentical hormones that were not as available here as they were in Europe because in Europe, they've always been... Uh, they've always done studies on bioidenticals. Women have been using them for years. In fact, when I lived in England, it was against the law to put hormones in the food or antibiotics in the food. In this country, the EU patrolled that, and it, it was not allowed. In this country, you know, we are up against big pharma and synthetic hormones. And as I was saying, um, you can't patent a hormone that's naturally derived from plant substances, and that's what bioidenticals are. They're naturally derived from plant substances. They are synthesized in a lab to, to fit into the cell just like a natural hormone that our own bodies make. So hormones are like a key. They travel out of the bloodstream into the target tissues where they do their work, and they are as specific as the key you use to open your own front door. They open the door to a cell, and they start flipping master switches. Mm. If it's not a natural hormone, an unnatural hormone like a Premarin or something that you get from hormones that you got in the meat you just ate or hormones that you, that you absorb through toxic cosmetics or chemicals that you use in cleaning your house, et cetera, those, those actually imp are imposters that act like hormones. They'll get into the cell. They don't open the door nicely like you do with your key. They kind of kick the door down, go into the cell and start overstimulating the cell apparatus so you get this excess of whatever hormone and you know just wreaking havoc on hormone balance it's like the unwanted guest who comes to stay and never leave you know you've got to <sighs> kick them out of the house um, they stay and stay and stay and create havoc 
So the bioidentical version is, is doing its best to mimic mother nature based on plants um, delivered in a natural way, i.e. usually in a cream that you rub into your skin, possibly in a suppository, a patch, transdermal patches are very common, steady state delivery, that's what we want. And also delivered in Goldilocks doses. So I'm talking not too much, not too little, just right. We're trying to mimic what our own bodies made naturally. So that is a much happier way to go. With synthetic hormones like PremPro, every single woman, you, me, the lady down the street, the, the cash register gal, were, my grandmother, my aunt, they, we were all on the same dose. One yeah. size fits all. 0.625 milligrams. We were all on the same dose. And guess what? Nobody ever tested us. To, to, to determine do we even need these hormones? How much, you know, this has been a revolutionary thing in the last 10, 15 years that there is a test. You know, think about all, all the times you go to the doctor, well, let's test your thyroid. Let's test your, all these tests that are available. And no one ever says, let's test your individual hormone levels. The only hormones that anybody was ever, I mean, the old school docs were ever testing was FSH, that was the hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, signal from the brain to the ovaries, make hormone. If that FSH level stayed high, the doctor would say, well, the ovaries aren't hearing the signal, they're done, you're in menopause, here's 0.625 milligrams of Premarin. And, you know, and so went. So in 2003, there was a huge study, the Women's Initiative trial, it was on the, the cover of Time and in all the headlines that shock and awe, these hormones are killing us. They're creating, they're causing us to have uh, blood, doubling the risk of blood clots, 30% risk of increased uh, heart attacks, cardiovascular disease, and a huge increased risk of uh, breast cancer. And when they isolated the, uh, a lot of people in the study dropped out, those that were on the synthetics. And so when they isolated the study to those who had remained in the study, the risks were even greater, like a 51% increased risk of breast cancer when using uh, among hormone replacement therapy users, wow. the synthetic hormones. So that began a huge shift. Overnight, like 50% of women stopped using HRT, but then they were out in the cold. What do we do? You go to your doctor. He's been, he, she's been prescribing the same old, same old forever and hadn't gotten the training. This is 2003. Um, suddenly everybody had to do a major shift. And now we have uh, a huge uh, sea change in the way doctors, some doctors, there's, a, there's a, a whole movement. You've heard, of, of course, integrative doctors, functional medicine doctors. These people know that testing your hormone levels is so important. Who would ever prescribe thyroid if you didn't have a test in hand? You use mm -hmm. tests as a basis for prescribing. So these functional medicine doctors and people like me, health educators, health coaches, there's all kinds of people that can talk, speak to how do you balance your hormones naturally? How do you use bioidentical hormones? They're not, they don't all need to be prescribed. Um, you can use natural versions that are over the counter. So that's kind of the, you know, that's the nutshell of it. It's, we're talking heavy synthetics that wreak havoc on the body and shut down our body's own naturally occurring production versus natural hormones made to fit in every way possible as specifically mimic mother nature. You rub a, a, a natural progesterone in and your body says, hey, I know this one. I know what to do with this. I know where it goes. I know how to use it. So that's a huge difference. And I think I mentioned before that European women have been using these things for 30 years. We're just behind because we're so controlled by big pharma. So, so you know, it's another huge topic. But it really, I, I think when I get on my soapbox, I just cannot believe the kind of number that was done on women. We, on the one side, were put on birth control when we're young for just about anything. And, and on the other side, we're, we're, we're slapped on a, a synthetic hormone. I mean, it's amazing we managed to survive and, you know, be, be uh, sane. And some yeah. of us don't feel sane. We feel like we're bouncing off the walls and going crazy. So for sure, for that's sure. part of it. My, um, back to the um, birth control, my daughter, who's 17, she comes home all the time and it's like, oh, so-and-so is on birth control now. And I'm like, why are they on birth control? And it's like, oh, she has got acne. And yeah. I'm like, it's just ridiculous. They just stick them on for this acne. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for listening to the Kingdompreneur Life Podcast. 
Don't forget to join us next week for another inspiring episode. We'd love for you to head over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. We love reading all your comments. You can also connect with us on our websites. Pat is CoachPatMartin.com, just like it sounds. CoachPatMartin.com. And Doreen is found at RawDoreen.com. That's R-A-W-D-O-R-E-E-N.com. You can download your free gift that will help you live life uncluttered and rich with purpose.